It's been e-bike week here on Kev Central, or e-bike two weeks. I had to extend it due to some unexpected out-of-town trips. One, I turned into a bike adventure, so there'll be a video upcoming on that. It also won't be the end of e-bike videos here. I mean, I have three new e-bikes on the way because every bike manufacturer seems like they're really ramping up that e-bike lineup, a sign of where the trend and market is really going. Even Walmart's adding new e-bikes, and that's today's video. The Schwinn e-bike, available at Wally World. I've had a request to do a review on the Schwinn Sidewinder, and now that name's being used on an e-bike. And this e-bike, it's not bad at all. It's still big box, but with some nice touches. So let's give it a look and you'll see what I mean. First, let's go over the cards and the hang tags. The wheel cards, like every other Walmart bike, they do their sizing based on wheel size. The difference here is the electric feel the boost graphics. On the handlebar tag, we get the first details, a 250 watt motor, a 10.4 amp hour battery, it's a 36 volt battery, and it mentions the 7 speed trigger shifter, and I assume that's where the confusion on the Walmart website comes in, because they say it's a 7 speed bike, I submitted a correction, this is a 21 speed. The final hang tag is the price tag, and with one more reference to feel the boost, you learn that that's going to set you back $898. So not the cheapest e-bike, especially for one that's 250 watts, though this bike has some nice touches that somewhat justify the price in my opinion. Like the stem, it's not the usual 90 millimeters. This is a 60 millimeter that's identical to the one that came on my Hyper Carbon X. Also good bars, which are just shy of 660 millimeters and they're 31.8 millimeter diameter. Handlebar grips, very standard. The brake levers, plastic, though they have an integrated rubber textured area that makes them feel slightly higher spec than they probably are. Shifters, they're micro shift trigger shifters. The right 7 speed, it's an index shifter, but the left, it looks like an index, but it's actually not. And I don't like that, but we'll see how it works out. Computer wise, they went no frills. It's very basic yet functional. There are five pedal assist modes, and it's easy to work up and down through whatever mode you want. Along with the Schwinn badge, there's electric branding on the head tube. This bike's a straight steer and a basic big box suspension fork. The only real flare being zoom branding and the e-bike stickers. The front wheel, it's quick release. Kenda knobby tires, very small knobbies, more street than trail, with double wall wheels, though this is one of my pet peeves. The rim braking surface on a disc brake equipped bike. Didn't expect any brand names outside of the usual zoom and pro wheel, so seeing Jaguar cable housings is a nice touch. The frame is aluminum, it says lightweight, and the bike weighs 46.6 pounds, making it my lightest e-bike, and I like the contouring of both the top tube and the down tube. Now I'm 5'10", and I have this seat post at max height, so note that. On the saddle, more Ishwin branding. Drivetrain-wise, the pedals are alloy, and the crank arms, 170mm Pro Wheel, and this is a 3x, not 7 speed, but 21. The front derailleur, it's a Torney, and that goes with a Torney for the rear. The rear gearing, a 7-speed freewheel, and of course, here's that 250-watt hub motor. Now, I'm assuming this is a standard 12-magnet cadence sensor. Now, I said disc brakes, it's JAK Super Brakes, not my favorites. I've had a hit-or-miss experience with these, so we'll see. 160mm rotors. Here's the Joy Cube 36-volt, 10.4-amp-hour lithium-ion battery. It takes about 4-6 to six hours to charge. It has a waterproof charge port and can be charged in or out of the bike. It's removable via a keyed lock. So a slight mix, typical big box, and some not so typical, and it gets really not typical on the road. Because, and I'm not exaggerating this, this Sidewinder, it's the smoothest power transfer of any e-bike that I own. And overall, I would say the smoothest ride. Now, I'm not saying the most fun, because of all my bikes, I still like my fast fat tire e-bike, but this is definitely the most smooth. And looking at it from a novice e-bike buyer perspective, shopping in the sub $900 price range, there's lots of Anchir style e-bikes. I have a review of one of those if you want to check it out. But it's nicer than I was expecting. Plus, and some may find this as a benefit, some not, this is a pedal assist only bike, meaning there's no throttle. So the rider has to pedal. And also use the shifter, so it's more like riding a regular bike. Now these micro shift trigger shifters, they do work well, but I'm not quite sold on the trigger placement. I prefer using a thumb and a trigger finger over thumb only, but they do work. They are kind of quick and poppy, more so than smooth, but they have been trouble free. Now that's the right, the left non-index shifter though, that's super annoying to me for a couple of reasons. Number one, because it could have been a regular index shifter, and also because of my trigger thumb, I have to reach over with my right hand to get it into the highest chain ring. And that's really just my problem, because the shifter does work, but really a trigger shifter that's indexed would have been nicer. 
Here's an example of the smooth power transfer I've been talking about, because cadence sensor bikes, they tend to be on-off. The power's on or it's off, and manufacturers are starting to adjust them so that the power comes on more smoothly, and Schwinn totally nailed it. Not only with the smooth power up, but also how that power meshes with the gearing, because it's really only in the smallest chain ring that I find any gearing that wasn't really usable. And for anyone that has a cadence sensor equipped bike, you'll know what I'm talking about here. You wouldn't normally ride without hands, because engaging and disengaging the motor, it's not confidence inspiring. So again, hats off, or in this case, hands off to Schwinn for doing such a great job. And that cheap front suspension, it's just good enough for this bike, at least for where it'll be ridden. It's smooth enough to venture out onto dirt or onto lawns without too much jolting. And the smoothing out, paired with just enough power, makes it easy to tackle off-road hills, even climbing up some steep banks. It's a perfect amount of assistance, where it's still easy, but I feel like I'm doing something. Which brings up another not-so-common cadence sensor-equipped e-bike characteristic, and that's actually being able to pedal while standing. Again, it's the smooth power and the available gearing meshing well. And to me, that makes this a good combo for someone looking for e-bike ease while affording some degree of fitness, or at least more input from the rider. And the motor's quiet and quick to engage, too. Power up and power down with minimal delay, and quiet enough that it can barely be heard over my bent derailleur hanger making a racket. No, don't drop your e-bike when getting it off a rack. What about speed? That's always a main question I get. Well, in the hardest gear up front, working through all seven rear speeds, starting out at a pleasant five miles per hour, I can incrementally work up to about 18 for a comfortable pace. I can hit 20 going full out on flat ground, but 18 is comfortable and maintainable. Downhill, I can feel the power turn off right at 20 miles per hour, and the top speed downhill, 28, but that's with my power. Now, I've enjoyed my time riding this bike, and it's a good bike for me to use to transition back into riding standard bikes, so that makes me impressed. And when Schwinn initially showed me the specs, I sort of rolled my eyes and thought, there's no way this is worth $898. But after riding it, I don't feel that way anymore. Now I'm thinking that this may be a decently priced bike, considering the mix of performance versus components with the few nice touches thrown in. They might not be spectacular, but they're not bad, and I didn't expect them. And you pair those with the run of the mill, and it's okay. Over three charges, I've averaged about 23 miles per ride. Compared to my other e-bikes, I do miss not having a display to show miles per hour in the odometer. I do like seeing that mileage run up, though that can be easily added. The computer, it is easy to control and about as non-confusing as it gets. The big box elements, like the fork and the 21-speed drivetrain, since I don't take this off-road and the power is augmented, it's not really a factor. I think this could probably work as a one by though I do use two of the available three gears up front on a regular basis. For the smoothness, a lot of people would point to the cadence sensor, but I know it's really the speed controller programming meshed with that 250 watt motor. My thoughts on these micro shift shifters after some time with them is that they're better than twist shifters or even the Shimano Mickey Mouse shifters, though that left shifter being non-indexed is a slight downer on an otherwise great experience. Pleasantly, the JK Super Brakes on the bike I was sent have worked well. The seat, though, not comfortable, and on day one, the graphics on it had already started peeling off, and some may find that a plus, but all the frames graphics, those are clear-coated. The batteries are stickers, though, and they can be removed. And did I mention how much this frame reminds me of the curves on the Hyper Carbon X? Because it does, albeit in aluminum. For a class 1, 20 mile per hour e-bike, 18 comfortably, I think Schwinn did a good job for the Sidewinder e-bike, at least for the intended market. That's where you have to think about this bike in relation to who's going to buy it, because Walmart bike shoppers, that's a somewhat walled garden. Many people that buy bikes at Walmart only buy bikes at Walmart. Even my dad, who knows what's out there because he sees all the bikes I have, if someone asks him, where are you going to buy a bike, he would say Walmart. Knowing that, they could have skimped on the nice touches and the power polish, but they didn't, and that makes this Sidewinder an acceptable e-bike in my opinion. Comment below and let me know what you think about this bike and about e-bikes having an increasing presence at Walmart in general. And there were actually demos of this bike at select Walmart stores, so I think it's safe to say Walmart is interested in e-bikes. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and everyone should check that notification bell because there's more to come. Have a great day.